Whenever I lose faith in humanity, I always go back to the dream of living in a cottage, foraging for my own food, collecting mushrooms, baking little cakes all day. I even have a Pinterest board to show how much I've actually thought about doing this. It's a constant thought in my life. But alas, that's not the case, because I live in the wind and rain, constantly do crafts like the old woman I am, feed my little babies who eat all the food, along with my housemate Louise. So indulge me as I take you on a trip to living a small part of my fantasy life. Come and forage some wild garlic with me. So I've been foraging once before in my life to this little part in Brighton called Coney Woods and there's the garlic. I, I went last year in May and I picked a fair amount but this time I went a little bit overboard because I was picking in this small patch, decided to walk a different way out of the forest and came across this. There was so much garlic and every time I went to pick some, I kept going back for more, which led to me bringing home a vast amount. Way more than anyone needs. Look at it, it's insane. So once it was in the bath, it was time to give it a wash to get rid of all of the nasties. So I'd say I'm about halfway through. Um, I didn't quite realize how much garlic I'd picked. That is everything that's been washed so far. And this is what we've got left. Um, there's that, that's a lot of garlic. Some of it is going to a friend, maybe a couple of friends. That is far too much for two people to consume. There's only so much pesto I can make and only so much room in my freezer. <laughs> so after about 20 minutes, half an hour, I'd finished washing all of my garlic. There was, there was so much. I'm, I'm so surprised that I kept going, but I've organized it all into two bags that are going in my freezer, fresh stuff for me to use, and then everything that's left over was donated to some of my neighbors and some friends. And now that I had it all clean, it was time to pick something to make. And I decided to go in my baking era and make some wild garlic scones. And I followed a recipe by Foraged by Fern. She is on Instagram. And it was just a very simple scone recipe. Flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt. Give it a little mix. Add some butter and rub it together to get a crumbly texture so that your scones are nice and crumble and crumbly. Um, for someone who hates a lot of like getting their hands dirty and sticky, I feel like I've done something similar in every single video I've posted. Um, so once it's all crumble crumbled, I'm just gonna rinse our garlic again just to make sure that everything is definitely off and it's safe. Well, bam! We're then gonna cut it. Cut it all up nice and fine and add it to our crumbly crumbly mixture so that it's extra garlicky. We're then going to add in some nutritional yeast. I would also add either vegan cheese or cheese because these definitely needed more of a cheesy flavour and more salt if you guys are going to follow the recipe. They're my only recommendations for change. Then I'm going to add in some milk featuring our Green Door Store Cup which if you live in Brighton you've probably got one of those in your cupboard and then we're gonna bring it so it's a nice sticky consistency and ready to roll out on a floured surface um, I rolled these out twice because the first time I made them they were way too thin you want the dough to be at least two inches thick so that you get nice thick scones So because scones are quite short, you don't want to knead the dough too much because the more you knead it, the more the gluten's going to get developed and the tighter a crumb your scones will have. Please don't come at me for saying scone rather than scone. I'm just saying it how it comes out of my mouth and I have no idea which one I'm supposed to be saying. So please leave me be. Once your dough is at two inches thick, you want to make sure it's nice and flat and then you can go ahead and get your cutter and start shaping your scones. Scones. And ta-da, our grand reveal of our first scone. It's gone. It's beautiful. It 
you'll just want to do that eight more times uh, you should have plenty of dough to do that with and then it's time to oil them so the uh, recipe called for a maple syrup oil mix for their glaze I do not own maple syrup so I just used some leftover roasted pepper oil that I had gonna pop them in the oven and then when they're all golden brown take them out and we can eat our little scones and there they are look at them oh I've never made scones before so I was very excited when they came out we got one fugly fugly one but that's okay we have the beautiful one and all the others are mid so sacrifice mr. ugly for the demonstration and that all-important cross-section Moment of truth time. That smells so good. But these scones, scones, were really yummy and I very much recommend making them. It's such a good use for wild garlic and I definitely wouldn't have thought of putting them in a scone. Purely because last year when I had some, the only thing I made was pesto. Uh, the recipe for which is coming on my Instagram very, very soon but I would highly recommend baking some wild garlic into bread or scones. If you do go foraging and you're not really sure where to look, try having a look on Reddit to find out little foraging spots in your area. And if you come across wild garlic but aren't quite sure, just pick some and smell it because you'll be able to get a good garlicky whiff and know that you're pretty safe. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this style of video and um, yeah, subscribe, like, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye guys.